Yo from Ropo, this is Team Matt Latrons with another video on the FBA business cards. And you remember these guys. These are the uh, samples that I had made in their nice little uh, card dispenser. And uh, you remember this uh, design that I had made for them? Well, guess what came in the mail the other day? All these. And now I've got all kinds of business cards with all the different designs that everyone had made for them. So it's, uh, and it was really exciting to see them all come out. So anyway, I'm not going to go through all the dispensers here. I did pull out a whole stack of cards. And uh, right af off the bat, I'm sure you'll see that uh, the front is designed differently. Now it has this black border around the edge. So uh, one of the issues I found out when I had the uh, sample card made was that um, the uh, Zazzle.com required or, or wanted to use a safe zone. They, uh, they recommended that you place all of the important information of the card in a certain zone inside the edges of the card. And the idea being that they couldn't guarantee where the card would be cut. And so by keeping all the vital information in that safe zone, it guarantees that it'll be in the card. And so uh, for the face of the cards, I decided to uh, create this design where I had a, a black edge around it, and the card was basically in a white, in a, in a white bordered box uh, centered inside the, uh, the safe zone. And I'm sure as you can see that uh, the way this was cut, it, it cut quite a bit more on this one side than they did on the other. So uh, it was a good idea because obviously they didn't evenly cut it all the way around, but the important information is all in there. And uh, this is the much stripped down card. It's uh, got less information but uh, than my very first design, but this is similar to the demo design that I had made in the sample. Uh, the only difference between this, uh, besides the obvious uh, putting it all into a box and on a black background, was I did add a little number one here to the uh, top left corner. And I figured uh, I would do that to uh, indicate this was a first generation card. So if these things do take off and become popular, if you have a card that's got that little number one there in the uh, top left, you'll know that you had the absolute first printing of an FBA Post Up Podcast uh, business card. So as for the backs of the cards, we'll uh, take a peek right now. And voila, start with uh, Buck Hopper. And uh, with these pictures, so um, similar to the front, I made sure all of the text was inside the uh, the safe areas, and uh, now I didn't want to box everything, and I wanted uh, stuff to reach the edges. Um, so instead of creating the box or creating that board around everything, I just made sure that uh, the character's face, that the uh, all the text, that uh, the uh, uh, the credit to the artist, all of that fit inside the safe zone, and so that's why I had to have the. Uh, uh, credit to the artist here, as you can see, before I had it on the edge and it got cut off on the uh, the sample card. So this time, it's actually readable, it's right there, and uh, it's uh, and uh, there's no danger, it, actually none of the cards had that chopped off, so it was there uh, for all the cards. So Buck Hopper looks great, here's another one that I made. So Barton Rouge looking very nice as well. And in this case, it, I, it, it was, was a difficult one to figure out where I was going to put the credit, because I didn't like putting it down here in all this nice empty space and uh, it just seemed like it would be more weighted if I put it uh, up there in that corner so it's a little bit different from the other cards but uh, but it came out looking okay and then now we're going into the Okamoto cards here starting with Katashi Kappa and uh, I have uh, in these cards uh, this was actually kind of interesting all of Okamoto's pictures uh, that uh, I was given have this signature on them now unfortunately when I shrunk down the picture uh, to uh, fit it inside the card, it shrunk down that uh, uh, credit as well, that, uh, excuse me, that signature, and to a point where I thought it was going to be too small to see or print. And so I isolated that and uh, made a new copy and made sure it was large enough. And so I made sure that all of uh, Okamono's uh, pictures have the signature there in a good size, something that you can see. And, uh, and of course, I put down uh, a proper uh, copyright that uh, Okamono had asked for. So. Um, got that all that information in there, and I think this card came out looking really good, as did all the cards from Okamono. I think uh, one of the things I was very pleased with, and I'm really am pleased with, uh, with Zazzle.com, is just the printing process. There's all these different colors going on, and the printing process just looks really, really good. So, and here is probably one of the trickiest ones. I was really concerned with how Dorian Black was going to appear, um, being a black cat on a black background. And it may be hard to see on the camera, but I'll tell you that looking at it, it, it really actually works. You can see that there is a different quality of black between uh, Dorian Black's fur and the black background. 
And, uh, and while it does blend, if you, you know, catch it in a dim light, uh, under a good light, you can really see the difference and you can see the edge work, the, the, um, you can, this, this arm becomes defined and the face becomes defined. You can make it all out. So it actually came out really, really nicely. Very happy with that. And Peter Connor is next. And, uh, then we're moving on to the Crest Blaine picks. And here's Monty Silverthorne. And unfortunately, because the name was so long, I had to shrink, shrink it a lot more. You can see, especially next to the Peter Connor card, just how much more Monty, uh, that name had to be shrunk down in order to fit it in. But uh, still, it uh, made it in. Jefferson Adams is next. And uh, came, coming out great. Again, I just love how much uh, the, uh, the inks just pop out. There's just great color in these pictures. And now we're moving on to uh, the uh, Sea Cat picks with uh, Bobby Heron, which uh, I know a lot of you probably didn't see this one before. This is a uh, uh, Sea Cat gave me a picture that he had drawn of Michael Honorable and uh, Bobby Heron and uh, and asking me to work on a background. And sadly, I've been pretty uh, uh, lazy on that. I haven't gotten around to doing that, but I really, really love the picture of Bobby Heron. And uh, so he gave me permission to let me uh, Photoshop out Michael Honorable and just isolate Bobby Heron for this picture. And I got to admit, out of all of the overlays of a player over the name, this is just one of my favorites. I really, really like how uh, uh, Bobby Heron's face goes over uh, his name like that. And uh, it's it's great because it just it covers a lot, but it's readable. I think anybody who sees this, even if they don't know the character's name, will immediately get that name out of it. So that came out really, really nicely. And ah, here's Admirable May. Here's Admiral May. I have a lot of trouble with that name, don't I? Uh, and uh, looking really good. Uh, small adjustments on this one. Um, let's see here. I think I actually moved Admiral a little bit closer to the edge, but thankfully he did not get chopped off on the side. Uh, nice cutting here on the top with the basketball. Um, I mean, it was just nice to be able to design this in this way. And I got a little bit of underlay with the uh, Admiral May name. That came out looking really good. Brad Zimmerman, that's a very exciting picture, and that came out great. Had a little bit of trouble trying to figure out where to put the credit, but it seems to work where it is. Maybe the picture's a little bit uh, misweighted, but it seems to work. And then I've got uh, Donovan Knox here, and uh, looking very crisp. And what is, this is one of the few pictures, I think, where the character is facing away from his name, but I think it works really well in this, uh, this particular image. Now, I'm sure a lot of you counting realize, hey, wait a minute, there's some cards missing here. And you're right, there are four cards that are missing. And this was the uh, one problem I had with this order, that unfortunately, uh, there were four cards that didn't come out so good. And uh, the uh, first one I'll show you here is the one from Balto. Here's uh, Dat Mangosti. And uh, this is an absolutely fantastic image. I really love this picture. Uh, Balto just drew a wonderful image. And, uh, but you'll see, if you look closely, that at the bottom of the picture, uh, there's kind of a mirror image going on here where this basketball kind of bleeds downward and then all the line work just kind of like, it's a little bit like this whole picture got flipped over and mirror imaged underneath it and uh, to, to fill out the bottom. So I'm gonna get this returned and, and uh, reprinted. And unfortunately, three other cards had the same problem. Here's Calvin Bynes card and you can see with the number 26, again, this sort of little mirror imaging going on. To, to make up some space underneath. And uh, Jakob Lischka got it kind of bad that uh, you know, there's just this weird bit of line work going on at the bottom and that it messes up a lot of the text uh, in the background here at the very bottom edge. And then finally, Randy Catcher. I almost make, made it, a, uh, you know, I, after I saw these other cards, I looked very, very carefully at the rest just to see if there were any other problems. And this one just barely has a little bit of mirror imaging at the bottom. It's a shame because I really love this card. I think it came out looking great, but uh, but yeah, just that tiny little bit. And I figured, hey, if I'm going to send back three cards, I might as well send it back four and make them all perfect. So I will be sending back these cards, and um, hopefully I'll be able to get new cards soon, and uh, they'll uh, look better. But in the meantime, I do have these cards. These cards are perfect. I'm very happy with them, and I will start mailing these out to everybody, and uh, then I will mail out the uh, fixed cards when they arrive. And uh, as you can see. I've got plenty to give, so I am looking forward to pulling all these out of the cases, mixing them all up, and giving them out in random order. So anyway, thank you very much everyone who donated uh, pictures. I uh, think that'll do it for this video. Thanks again, and that's a swish.